Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to vocode inside FL Studio. It's a really straightforward effect, so let's just get right into it. One of the reasons I like vocoding is that you can use it in a wide variety of ways. You could go really extreme with it, think of like in the 80s with Phil Collins, or you can use it in a more modern way or a more subtle way. Think about the way that like Zed produces or Lauv, where it's just used as an incredible thickening trick. I'm going to give you a quick before and after right now. So we'll be taking a vocal from sounding a little bit like this. Nights with the light of you burning bright, visiting ghosts. To sounding like this. Nights with the light of you burning bright, visiting ghosts. And the last example before we get into it is just to show that you can use it as a thickening technique so you can just sit it behind the main vocals and just make them sound really wide and thick. Nights with the light of you burning bright, visiting ghosts. You only need three things to do this technique, and that is a vocal, which I have on the playlist, a synth, and then a mixer channel with the vocoding plugin loaded on it. So let's just go back to the start. I have the vocal, which I've sent to a track on the mixer. It doesn't have to be track two, just as long as it is sent to a track on the mixer. In my case, I've got it sent to track two, which is just here. Now the next track on your mixer has to be the synth, and this is going to determine uh, how the vocoder harmonizes that original vocal. So I have a synth on the playlist, and if I open up the channel rack, I'm using Serum, and I'm sending it to track three, which is the next channel along from the vocal. I'm using Serum because I'm really familiar with it, but you can use any synth, and I like to start with something like a saw wave or a square wave, something that's quite buzzy with some brightness to it, and then we'll modify it from there, but I'll go into more details soon. In my pattern, I have Serum playing the particular chords of my song, but when you're vocoding, depending on the application, you could pick whichever chords you like, and I'll demonstrate that in just a minute, but for now, I've got the basic chords of the song here. So if I were to play these two along together, it would sound like this. Nights with the light of you burning bright, visiting ghosts. Which is, you know, no good, but we've got that big uh, saw wave sitting underneath. Now that was sent to three, which was the next one along from the vocal. And then the, the third one along from there is where I'm going to put my vocoder. So I go to the effects chain, I just select a new plugin, and I'm going to select Vocodex, which is in the miscellaneous plugins section. So Vocodex will load up like this. The first things we're going to do with it are just take this down, and I'm just going to uncheck all of these boxes, and I'm going to take it out of draft mode because I want to hear it in full quality. But if your computer is not so great, uh, you can keep that on draft mode there. The important thing here is modulator and carrier. So the modulator in our case is going to be the vocal, the carrier is going to be the synth. And we have to select these inputs. So right now these are set to zero, you can't scroll up and down, it's just zero or nothing. But what we're going to do is go back to the vocal channel on the mixer. I'm going to turn down its input to the master. So now if I press play, the vocal doesn't go out to the master. I'm going to go down to the vocode channel, I'm going to right click and select sidechain to this track. Simple like that. So no volume, just a sidechain. Now we're going to do the same thing with the synth. I'm going to just select it on the mixer. I'm going to turn down its input to the master, and I'm going to right click and select sidechain to this track. So no volume, just a sidechain. Now in the Vocodex plugin, we can select our modulator and carrier. Now there's a little symbol here with a mouth and a, some keys to help remind you which is which, but scroll up when you're inside this box. Scroll up with the mouse for one and scroll up for two. You can also right click and you can actually see wh what the mixer channel is called, which means you know there's no way to get confused at this stage. Synth carrier, vocal mod. Now if I turn everything back on in the playlist and press play, this will be the result. Nights with the light of you burning bright, visiting ghosts. And that really is 90% of the effect. So now I'm going to go into optimizing it and making it sound as good as possible. First things first, we have a, a wet level, so you can turn up the overall level or down. With the light, burning bright. There's a sound goodizing fader here, so you can sort of uh, compress it a lot. I tend to just leave that alone. The next two faders let you pass some of that vocal or some of that synth signal through, and there's like a high pass and a low pass here. So if I just take away the high pass and push up the vocal, you'll hear the main dry vocal cutting through a little bit more. Nights with the light of you burning bright, visiting ghosts. And the same with the synth. Nights with the light of you burning bright, visiting ghosts. Again, I tend to leave these alone. I just like having that fully wet vocode, and then I'll blend it in later. Now I'm going to cover three or four of the controls that make by far the biggest difference to how this sounds. 
So firstly, uh, the order here. Typically, a lower order is going to make it sound more like a synth, and a higher order is going to make it sound more like the original vocal. So let me just play around with these here. So on the lower side, it sounded more buzzy, more like that saw wave. On the higher side, it sounded more, more like a human, but still a robot. And then the band distribution, so how many bands it's all split into. Right now it's on 47, that's just what it started with. If I take this down, it's going to sound more like a synth. If I take it up, it's going to sound more like that human voice. So if I take it all the way down and put the order on the lowest, it's going to sound just like a synth pretty much. If I put it all the way to the top. And if I put the order to the very top with the most amount of bands, it's going to sound as realistic as possible. And at this stage, there's no rights or wrongs. Usually, I like having sort of a low-ish band distribution and then a medium order. And this is kind of like my preferred sort of starting point, about 15 or 16 bands and an order of two. I think that's a good place to start. The next thing I like to adjust is the attack and release. So I'll just let you hear the difference right away. I keep minimum time selected and I just push the attack and release up a bit. It gives it this really metallic feeling and I think it smooths out the whole, uh, the whole uh, signal, so to speak. And the last most critical control is this bandwidth control here. When I adjust this, it's going to make things sound really resonant and sharp or just really buzzy and smoothed out overall. You'll hear the difference. So really, between the attack and release times, the band, the order, and then the bandwidth, this really gets you most of the control you want in the plugin. There are, of course, more controls in this plugin, and I find that the best way to like really learn them is to play around with them and also press F1. When you press F1 with the plugin open, it will open up the manual. You can open up the parameters, and it will briefly explain what all of them do and also how, uh, how it works. For instance, it says noise, adds noise to the carrier input. This can help improve speech intelligibility by preserving sibilance. You know, knowing things like that can really help you. So I often find, you know, people find that manuals can be boring, but the FL Studio manual is incredibly well written by Scott and does often, you know, it's a little bit humorous and it really does help you out. But for now, that should get you sort of 95% of the way there with your vocoding. And, you know, you can check boxes and uncheck them and just always listen to what sounds best to you. That's really what's going to guide it. And another thing I want to show you is that the synth you use makes a really massive difference to the way it sounds. So if I open up that serum patch again, right now we've got a load of high end, and if I were to say filter it, I'll show you how much of a huge difference this makes to the sound. When I filter it, all of the high end naturally goes away from the vocoding signal. And then for instance, say I turn on another oscillator, and I turn on, say, frequency modulation from this oscillator, this will dramatically change the original source sound, and it's just going to sound crazy. You know, any of those could be the sound that you want to go for, so really definitely experiment around with the synth you're using. The last thing I want to talk about for those that are more detail-oriented is that the notes here don't necessarily dictate the notes that the vocoder actually produces and you don't have to play full chords and i'll explain myself really quick um because i know that people already wanted to comment basically this tells the synth what to play and the audio that is output from the synth is dictating how the vocode harmonizes and vocodes so if i were to open the synth and uh pitch the synth up and down the midi hasn't changed but the vocode will change i'll show you so I just wanted to remind people that potentially your synth patch might have, might be, you know, a couple of semitones up. You could be putting in the right notes into the piano roll and not getting the right notes out. So I just wanted to remind people that the notes you put into here don't specifically 
output on the other side. It really depends what your synth does with these notes. And I know that's quite particular, but I just want people to know that it's it's not like you're picking which notes the vocoder uses. Although usually it can be just as simple as that. And while we're on the topic of the notes, you don't have to use the chords. You can create different harmonies. For instance, let's just put in a couple of different notes in the scale and see what this sounds like. And what's also cool is that your original vocal doesn't have to follow the same chords either. So in this part of the vocal performance, the vocal doesn't follow that chord progression. I don't think we can be, I don't think we can be friends. That is not the same chord progression uh, that this follows. However, if I just blend these together. And it just follows it and harmonizes it with the original vocoder. So there's there's pretty much limitless possibilities here. And you can also just select single notes. You don't have to make it a melody. So if I just delete some of these notes here. And it's not harmonizing a chord anymore. It's just a single note. There's just so many things you can do with this effect. And remember that once you've placed vocodex on the mixer, you can of course just add other effects. You can add EQs, you can add uh, reverbs and delays. So you could uh, delay and reverb your vocodes. So let's just put this to a load of reverb, for instance. And make it sound like really, really distant and just different. So there's really no rules for this, but I hope that basic amount of setup has really helped you. And if you are looking for any other videos to do with FL Studio, I have a whole playlist dedicated to FL Studio 20 and FL Studio 12 with a wide variety of different videos on mixing, production, recording. So I hope those help you out too. Anyway, I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.